don't know if you can hear it. They're howling right now. They're right at the end of the canyon. Farther up than where I saw that one. That one was down here. Maybe he was just split off the group. I'm gonna stop out and just sneak in. See if I can get close and make a bed. Two rookie mistakes happened all at once. I scoped myself and the scope was dialed for a thousand yards from my brother's target practicing the day before. My failure to check the scope before I went hunting caused me to miss a wolf at 175 yards. All I could do is sneak into the howling wolf, hoping he will give me a second chance. So, it feels like the hunt's over, I think it is, but I got one last shot. He's howling, but he's in a nasty spot. I followed him for quite a while. But he's by himself, and he's trying to call the rest of the pack. And usually the, the pack's up the canyon when the sun rises. So, I think if I go up the canyon here, follow the creek, I think I'll get between him and the rest of the pack. So, I think that's all I can do. I can't go where he's at right now. He is in an alder mess. I was hoping there may be a rock boulder or something I could try to call him out because that's only, he's only howling about a 500 yards away. In the timber, I was like 10 yards away, but no shot through the alders. Yeah, what a sucky, sucky day. So You've got wolves spotted. <laughs> We've been it's driving all morning. Hectic morning, so actually there's a good spot that, well it's the one where I caused my little whoopsie the other day. 
and Tan and I were coming up here for redemption and this is the last day she can hunt with me until she goes to Alaska. So it's like, let's go wolf hunt. Let's see if we can find that one that I saw before I did that big horn sheep with Adam. Uh, we came up here and well, lo and behold, it is elk season. So there's elk camps at every trailhead. And right where I wanted to go to find the wolves, there was just, there's like three horse trailers. I'm like, oh shoot, okay. Well, I think they're gonna blow the wolf pack out. And that's fine, whatever. Um, everybody's just trying to elk hunt. But anyways, um, we were about ready to head off the mountain, but it's like, let's just check. I wanna see, I'm all about like, see where everybody's from. And, and I don't, I'm, not, I'm not, I promise I'm not out to slash tires. I'm just, I just like to see if some people are residents or non-residents. And we were driving back to that trailhead to where I was seeing those wolves. And there was a wolf standing right in the road right there. Tiana was like going in the back seat looking for a snack. I'm like, yeah, there's a wolf in the road. I always see wolves when I snack. It's good luck. I was like, there's a wolf in the road. and. And she, we bump, jump out and go after it. And then it, we, I started howling and then the whole pack lit up right above us. So we're trying to cut them off. We're just actually trying to cut off the pack up here. Um, so yeah, wish us luck. It's a rough day. I mean, well, I just, I just realized like, man, this is, it's going to be pretty tough. There's a lot, a lot of elk hunters in the mountains, more than I expected. We saw some Washington plates early on today. I don't know what the guys who are camped at the trailhead are. I think they're locals. Usually, usually some local friends of ours have some horse trailers and they like to camp somewhere. But yeah, this pack, I think the issue, the only difficult part about this hunt is, you know, I feel like I've, I do really well at patterning, patterning wolves and stuff and now that all the elk hunters are in the mountains, I think all the, the wolf pack is kind of, they're panicking themselves and they're scattering. And so I don't think the wolves really know where they're going either. So I think we're just, I think we all are trying to figure out what the heck is going on right now. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's really weird where the wolves are right now, but I, it makes sense. Let's cut them off, Tana. Get the gun ready. We're, we're coming up on them soon. Sounds like there might be four or five. Tana, stop laughing. Look at all the gadgets on Tana's bag right now. Look at that. How do you even walk? Okay, well, this is Tana and Adam's last day here in Idaho hunting, and we decided to make a wolf run and try to get revenge on that wolf that I missed the other day. But we were up here, I uh, spent all morning trying to find them. Thing is, I really had a strong feeling I knew where they're at, but we had one problem. What problem was that, Tana? Elk hunters. Elk hunters, which is not a bad thing. I know, I, I just didn't even take that into consideration that it is elk season now, and I should be elk hunting. Why am I not elk hunting right now? Because wolves are on my mind. And so I wanted to give wolves another chance to die. Um, we came up here, we saw the elk hunters parked at the trailhead, and their camp is set up where those wolves have been hanging out. So we tried other places, trying to find the wolves. We knew the wolves got pushed out. It's just a guarantee with, you know, there's a lot of rigs at that trailhead. So it's like, oh yeah, the wolves are pushed out. We're trying to figure out where the heck they went. But anyways, Tan and I were just driving up some of the roads, just trying to figure out where they went. And we're not on the corner and there's a wolf in the road. And I had a mini heart attack. Tana was getting a snack. Tana so was like, Tana was just reaching in the back of the rig for a snack. She's supposed to be the one on the gun here. And I get around the corner and there's a wolf in the road and it takes off running. And well, actually, I think it's just straight up running when I went up. It, there was no, I yeah, didn't see a stop at one time. So anyways, wolf ran, got off the bank. We jumped out, tried howling. Whole wolf pack lit up right above the road. So we were in the middle of the pack. We were in the middle of the pack. And we're so like in there trying to find that wolf, and we hear one howling really loud right below us. And then I tripped and I cut my leg. Tana cut her leg. And my nice leggings. Yeah. And then the rest of the pack lit up above us. So there was like the pack, and then the single one that we saw, and then one below us, and we were just in the middle. It was crazy. It was crazy. And then so well, rather than you know, being one step behind, I thought we'd be one step ahead and try to get above them. There's a road above where those wolf packs were out. So I, I drove above them and, and come to find out they were between the two roads. So I actually left Tana there. I was like, they may escape. 
right you know that might be their escape route and there's just like a really good long straight stretch so it's like i'll leave tana here i'll cut below the road and hopefully be able to push them past tana but then they just kind of stop talking and um that's kind of where we're at now so i i worked my way up the ridge howling trying to find them again where they were and i don't know they, they kind of ran away and so right now we're tracking wolves yeah. with no snow how's that going tana Every couple hundred yards, you find one track in the dirt. <laughs> but they're all heading the same direction. They're kind of staying on this nice little trail here. So, um, but yeah, every so often you'll see a claw mark, and Dan's like, "I think it's a claw mark," and I'm like, "Yeah." But we're just trying to find out if they went this way or this way, because um, we we did see some wolf tracks heading that way too. So, um, the unfortunate thing is the wind is just the swirling. It's just the swirling. Yeah. Oh, good. They're going, going, going. going right where we're going. That's always nice. Seems like the wind always... Good wolf, Tana. Is he dead? He's dead. That is a beautiful wolf. That is a beautiful wolf. I know, I saw it was white. Oh my gosh, Tom. Oh, that was insane. Come here. We're, why are you keeping me hanging here? Right now? I just can't believe that just happened. We just did that recap talking about that track we were following and I was lagging behind just being slow and then I see Tom get down so I knew around the corner there was a wolf and I just stayed still because I didn't want to scare it <sighs> well, we just, no, I didn't know if there was more than we one did, we just didn't know if we had to go this way or this way for the wolf pack but we like oh, we, they, you know, I, there was kind of a spot back here well sometimes they'll hang out during the day so we said oh let's just go around and try to get them located we just walked around the corner on this old, this old grassy road and this beautiful white wolf starts coming, running right at us. And I'm just like, yeah, stop. And I pull up and it just sits there, like it stands there forward. And I'm just like, for me, and I know a lot of people pull the trigger really quick. And I had that hesitation where I'm like, I wanted to pull the trigger. But I was like, hold the second. And it, then I saw it started to turn broad. It's like, like I wanted to run. I shot right. I just like perfect pulled the trigger right behind the shoulder. It ran and just, but then it, well, it, it flopped. Sorry. Sorry, it, it flopped. And it was flopping in the road. Tess like, do I need to shoot too? I'm like, no, it's dead. It's a dead wolf. Well, then it just gets up and runs. I'm like, crap. I know. No. And so we're like walking aimlessly in this brush, looking for this wounded wolf. Have no clue what's going on. And we we're just walking. All of a sudden, I cut this really good blood trail. Led me to a dead, beautiful white wolf. Oh my gosh! I can't believe what just happened. Tom, wow, that is awesome. Look at that thing. Mail. Nice. What just happened? Show me your hands. They're dirty. They're turning red a little. And it's elk season. Why am I not elk hunting? To ask me, Tana, why am I not elk hunting? Why are you not elk hunting, Tom? Because wolves are on my mind. I should have probably pulled the trigger earlier, but I'm glad everything worked out the way it did. It first saw me, I was about ready to pull the trigger, and then it kind of stood broadside like I'm about ready to bounce. Pulled the trigger. And it just dropped right right in front of us, flopped around. Tess like, should I shoot too? I'm like, oh no, it's down. Like, it's good. Like, but then the wolf got up and bolted into him. I'm like, crap, Tana. This is his, oh crap, crap. And then that's his blood. And he actually, you know, I always say wolves leave the worst blood shells. This thing stuck, bled like a stuck pig. And he ran 75 yards and piled up. Beautiful white wolf. 
stuck in the rut. 2022, wolf on the ground. Man, I've worked after this pack, boy, I tell you. I've, I've gone up here a couple times in August and I've just been doing everything I can to pattern these wolves. And then a week ago, I had my true opportunity on a really big male and I made a really big mistake. I don't know if you can see this little scar right here, but um, I was, I was hiking to a spot where I'd been seeing the wolves and seeing activity and there was a big male just standing broadside. And I pulled up, I shot, um, I had my hunting pack on my back and it was pushing love forward on my neck. And it, but it caused that scope to hit me in the face. Wolf ran off and I was like, what the heck? Like, I should have been a dead wolf. I'm sitting there scratching my head. Man, the flies are horrible. But um, all of a sudden I was just sitting there playing with the turrets and I found out that the turret was an entire rotation off. Travis shot the gun the day before on a target and I forgot to check that morning. So um, he was shooting at a thousand yards. So that gun was dialed for a thousand yards and I missed the wolf at 170 yards. So that was really painful for me. I was sad, not just the fact that I missed the wolf, but it was an area we used to elk hunt a lot and had a lot of elk. And so it just seemed like we're back to square one trying to um, do some predator management. But then I had to take time off the hunt with Adam on his sheep hunt in Southern Idaho. Um, got a sheep first day and I kept in contact with Tana. I was sending Tana all, all the places where I normally see wolves and Tana, I finally sent her to this area where I missed that wolf and she said, oh yeah, there's lots of wolf sign, Tom. You need to come back here. And so as soon as I got back from Adam's sheep hunt, Tana came with me here in the beautiful state of Idaho and here we are chasing wolves. And so this is the last day Tana can be or Tana is here in Idaho before she flies up to Alaska. We made our way up the canyon where I normally see wolves and there's just elk hunters everywhere. And so the elk hunters actually pushed the wolves out we were, where we were normally, or where I was normally patterning them and seeing where they were at. And so um, we just thought the wolf hunt was over. Like, gosh, like we have no clue where the wolves got pushed to. And then just driving around um, the mountain roads, we actually jumped one in the road. And it was like, okay, there they are, you know? And so we got out, we uh, howled, the pack was howling back at us. And um, we, I, I'm pretty aware of this area. I've hunted this area a lot. And I told Tana that there's a road above. And so I dropped her off and I said, I'll go to the bottom and I'll try to push the wolf pack up to her. And so I howled my way up the mountain and we weren't getting any calls. No wolves are howling back at us. And Tana and I met back up and we just thought the hunt was over. The wolves must have moved in some drainage we didn't know. Well, so we met in the middle and there's this old gated road right here. And we just were thinking like, we were looking at tracks and actually Tana is a pretty good tracker. So we saw some younger tracks heading this way, but then we saw running tracks heading this way on the road. And so we both agreed, let's try to keep following those running tracks. And you're not seeing much. All you're seeing is claw marks in the dirt heading up this up this old road. And so Tana and I were at that point, we stopped calling. Um, we just had mouth howls. We left, these wolves are wised up to electronic calls. And so they don't call to those. Um, we headed up this old road, just kind of honestly thinking that the hunt was over. And this big white male just came running right toward us, just running down that road. And I pull up, I don't know if it was like 25 or 30 yards. I just get him one knee and to shoot. And it stands about right here, just like this, kind of a little quartered, which I'm not afraid of taking a quartering shot. When I first pulled up my scope, my crosshair's right on this shoulder. I'm like, nope, don't pull the trigger yet. And I start to move the crosshairs over. And he did a broadside turn. I put it right behind the shoulder. He dropped. That's about the time Tana turned on the, the camera to record. Everything just happened so fast. And Wolf was flopping. Tana's like, Tom, should I shoot? Should I shoot again? I'm like, oh no, it's dead. It's just laying right there. It gets up and it runs off the road. I'm like, what the heck? No, don't, I can't have this happen to me again. I can't have another wolf run away from me again. And we, we were just walking down this hill, just moseying around and we cut the blood trail. Man, usually wolves have, a, I have issues following wolf blood trails because they don't bleed well, but this thing bled like a stuck pig right behind the shoulder here. And, and followed him and there he was, laying there. Yeah, big male, I can't wait to get him aged. Um, Definitely the bigger member of the pack, possibly alpha, we're not sure. 
um, but age, you know, people ask me, how do you know if it's alpha or not? Usually you can tell by the age. Uh, usually a male does not last over three years in a pack before he gets kicked out and he starts his own pack because he starts becoming um, competition to the alpha male. And so if we, got a, if we got a dog here that's over three years old, then we got the alpha male. And nice. so that's how we usually figure it out. Show us the feet. So big, big paws on him. Ted and I were following his track, so as we were kept, we kept walking up the road. I mean, he has a, that's a big, mature male right there. Big male. So we got back from our sheep hunt, and I forgot to restock my pack with garbage bags and game bags. So I have to use a QU shirt that I had that I actually wore this morning. I was like, which? I was like, I have a couple shirts in here. I'm like, which one would I'm willing to sacrifice? I think it's this one. <laughs> so I tied the arms up, the head up, so... And put the, all the height in here. There's the wolf. He's a pretty dog. <laughs> pretty dog. I want to also mention too, like, I don't hate wolves. Like, you know, I like think a lot of people are just like, think that us hunters, we're all about hating wolves. I mean, obviously sometimes I don't like what they do to our elk population, but it's hard to not, it's, it's hard to not respect the animal. You know, I've tried hunting wolves with a grudge and it just doesn't work well. It doesn't feel good for me. And so, you know, for any animal, I understand that this animal is, you know, he's part of the ecosystem. He, he kills for a reason. He has to fill his belly full of food. And I'm just grateful to take him out. You know, I think the reality is, is I share this area with the wolves, unfortunately. And no, I was here first. <laughs> <laughs> the wolves were here first, I was here first. And, and so there, someone invaded my elk spot and I had to take this one out. Sorry, guy. <laughs> You're betting it. So as we continue to give you free content to watch, all we ask in return is to give us a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated on our newest hunting episodes. Both down, so Tam and I, we started below here. We're almost to the main road where I parked the pickup. There's a main road above us and then in the center, between those two main roads, there's a gated road where I shot the wolf. I thought I was actually gonna have a chance of killing these, this, one of these wolves, like there was, a, there was a wolf pack. I was gonna have a chance to kill them in the cedar grove here and have, I got quite a few shooting lanes. I did not know I was gonna shoot it on that gated road, that really nice rusty road. You just never know with wolves. It's pretty crazy, they're a really crazy critter. I can't tell you enough that you know, I've hunted a lot of animals over the years and there's nothing that gets my heart going like a wolf hunt.